These drone shots from the city of Derna give a sense of the devastation and the difficulties getting aid to where it is needed. The city on the Mediterranean coast was particularly badly hit. This was the port before the floods with its population of around 100,000 people. And this is what it looks like now after two dams and four bridges collapsed. Thousands of people are still missing. The mayor of Derna says he fears as many as 20,000 people may have died. Many people were asleep when their homes collapsed around them and many were washed out to sea in the torrent. A warning you may find some of the images in Quentin Somerville's report upsetting. When the storm came, fractured Libya was ill-prepared. Half a year's rainfall fell in just 24 hours. In daylight, as much as a quarter of the port city of Derna is revealed to be gone. Engulfed by flood water after two mountain dams failed. Families were washed out to sea as they slept. The grim work to retrieve the lost is underway. Locals working alongside the army are helping to remove the dead, which now number in their thousands. Bodies are being washed ashore by the dozens. With terrible force, the flood swept through this city, destroying homes, cars, bridges. There was no warning, no evacuation order. Gently, the body of a child is recovered from the rubble. Few here are being found alive. Derna and Libya are overwhelmed. It's too much for those left grieving. Entire families were swallowed by the deluge. I already lost six people. We managed to take out three and we did not find the other three people. We're searching for the bodies here. We could not find them. Derna has long been marginalised. It was once a base for the Islamic State group. Years of neglect and conflict and two rival governments have seen Libya fall apart. It has been an enormous shock and I don't want to point the blame at anyone or create controversy. Even if all measures had been taken, there would have been losses, massive losses. But more could have been done. We had warned the authorities since last week, no, for years, that the dam had cracks and needs to be maintained. We said it and nobody listened to us. And now the whole of Derna is flooded. What remains here is already barely functioning. This hospital in Al Baida is struggling deep in water and flooded with casualties. And for medical staff, it's all too much. This is a catastrophe from God. We've lost families, brothers. The figures are massive. International help is on the way. These planes are from Jordan, but with many of the roads in eastern Libya washed away, aid will struggle to get through. This is Libya's third day of national mourning, and still the corpses keep coming. After a decade of chaos, this fresh tragedy is one the country can't bear alone. Quentin Somerville, BBC News. Well, Frank Gardner is with me now. He's been looking at just what happened when that storm hit on Sunday. Frank. Well, Sophie, this has been one of the worst disasters in Libya's history. But how did it happen? This satellite footage here shows Storm Daniel, which some meteorologists have been calling a Medicaine or a Mediterranean hurricane. It killed 15 people in Greece in the past week, then made its way across southern Europe, making landfall in Libya on Sunday. The worst hit area has been Derna on the northeast coast. Right through the city centre runs the Wadi Derna River Valley, flowing down from the Jabal Akhtar Mountains. But that river valley is dry for most of the year and no one was prepared for this. There are in fact two dams. The upper one is this one, the Al Bilad. It's around eight miles south of the city. Due to the sheer amount of rainfall and flood water from the storm, it burst, as you can see in this video footage here. After that first dam collapsed, it sent water pouring down the valley before reaching a second dam, the Abu Mansur, which lay much closer to the city, less than a mile from it. 
so the sheer force of the flooding meant that this second dam was also overcome. Well, what more do we know about the dams themselves? We understand that both of them were constructed around 50 years ago by Yugoslav engineers with cores made of clay protected by what's called a stone carapace or shell. Clearly, these were not strong enough to cope with the storm and flooding of this magnitude. And of course, all of this was compounded by Libya's dysfunctional politics, a country so rich in natural resources and yet desperately lacking the security and stability that its people crave. Sophie. Frank, thank you. Well, let's go back now to Quentin Somerville, who has been following this story from Beirut. And the scale of the devastation only really becoming clear now. One estimate tonight that up to 20,000 people could be dead in, in Derna alone. Yeah, Sophie, those figures from the mayor of Derna, I, I think, though, they'll be counting the bodies there for many days, if not weeks, to come. There are many countries that could have handled flooding of this scale, but not one as troubled as Libya. It has had a long and painful decade, civil wars, uh, local conflicts, and Derna itself was taken over by the Islamic State group. The city was bombed to remove from them from there. And ever since then, even before this disaster, uh, the people were terribly neglected. They've been called the most marginalised of the marginalised. But let's not forget, there were warnings that these two dams might be breached, not just from locals, but from Libyan academics too. But amid Libya's chaos, those warnings went unheeded. The reality, though, for, for Libya and other Mediterranean countries that with rising water temperatures, they need to be better prepared for these kind of emergencies. But for Libya, a country that's been at war with itself, which has been neglected by the West, it simply wasn't able to do that, and its people have paid a terrible price. Quentin Somerville, thank you.